Hi, what a pleasure to be here. So I've chosen this lovely picture because I thought it might inspire you about the beauty of the oceans and the importance of conserving it. But actually, it sort of reminds me how I feel sometimes at the end of a day, actually at the end of several days sometimes, but in particular at the end of a day of reading papers about coral reef decline, analyzing data about the demise of our planet's oceans, about how although there are 5,000 marine protected areas on our planet, it only covers less than 1% of our oceans. And you know what else? Most of the largest ones of those are in places where people don't live. So I'm going to talk to you today about the importance of actually not just revitalizing our sense of community with each other, but in fact revitalizing our sense of community as a planet. The young woman you just heard used the word we. We care about our environment. We is a really big word, and now includes seven billion of us. And if we don't connect ourselves across cultures, I think we're not going to move forward as fast as we need to. But it's not all gloom and doom, see? It really isn't. There are ways forward. In fact, there are incredibly underutilized ways forward. This may be a picture that inspires people a little bit more about the beauty of the oceans and the importance of protecting it. It might make you think about a pristine or healthy environment. But to a Micronesian outer islander, this might look more like a healthy ocean, a diverse array of reef fish, which will not only feed their families, but sustain their communities. Communities who have been utilizing those resources for millennia. And not just utilizing those resources, but protecting them but conserving their reefs. Maybe not in the pristine state that we may think of pristine, but in a state that continues to provide for them. They have a wealth of knowledge that we might benefit from. So I'm going to read you this quote here, and I'm going to specifically focus on the first part of it. We need to have a common understanding around management so that everyone agrees and supports it. Understanding the old ways and the impacts of the new ways can help us protect the ocean for our children and their children. This is a chief from Asor Island on Ulithi Atoll. But and he's addressing his community with this. So look at what he says first. We need to have a common understanding around management so that everyone agrees. He's not going to tell his people what to do. In fact, he understands that if he mandates a plan to them, there's a good chance that aspects of it might fail. Instead, he's going to get the support of his community, a deep support from his community around a problem that they all face. Ultimately, we all rely on the oceans. I think we know this in one way or another. But our relationships with that ocean may differ, in fact, do differ vastly. For some of us, it's an appreciation of the beauty, but for others, it's a dependence for life. So I really believe, and in fact, we are finding, as we work in the Micronesian Outer Islands, that achieving conservation through multiple perspectives is a key step forward, combining science with traditional practices. And the first step to doing that is to listen. We don't listen enough. We don't listen to each other enough, and we certainly don't listen to people from other cultures and other perspectives enough. And they may have and do have a great deal to teach us. This is a paradigm shift, though, because the Western world directs most of our global initiatives in marine conservation. The ideas and plans come from people in seminar rooms and board tables that are university trained from a Western perspective for the most part. We don't have traditional people sitting at those tables most of the time. And when we do, it's to tell them the importance of implementing the plans that we came up with and teaching them how to do it, providing them with the key skills for how to implement the plans that we came up with. But they've been doing this for thousands of years. And in fact, we only came up with those plans after we already destroyed our own resources, right? So I don't know who you should be listening to here. So this is a paradigm shift. It's, a, it's an important paradigm shift. So where the heck is Yap? I'll take you briefly to this place. It's one of the four states in the Federated States of Micronesia. It's south of Japan and east of the Philippines. But if we zoom in on Yap State itself, this is a vast archipelago of the Western Caroline Islands. It stretches over 500 miles into the Western Pacific, having only 45 square miles of land. The outer islands are only seven square miles of land. So 38 of those are on the main islands of Yap. 
This is a, an archipelago that covers more than 100,000 square miles of ocean on which people have lived for thousands of years, and they've understood how to live there. It's a watery world. It's a world where people can't depend on somebody to bring them what they need if something happens. They have to depend on themselves, and they have, and they've done it well. And their communities have not only survived there, but thrived, and still do, and they still live very traditionally. We know that diverse ecosystems are linked to diverse traditional practices. This is a, a common knowledge in anthropology. The more different ways we fish, the more different kinds of hooks we use and nets we use and traps that we use, the di more diverse our systems will, will be left, the state in which our systems are left will be more diverse. Now we're reducing those numbers of fishing techniques to way, way fewer than they used to be, and that's causing problems. So how do we bring together tradition and science? As I mentioned, the first thing is to listen. It takes a community that is engaged, which these people certainly are. They are the most inspiring people I've ever had the pleasure to work with. It takes chiefs that are visionary, that are willing to move their people through a time of unprecedented change, precipitous change, both ecological and cultural. They are navigating waters that are intensely murky. They can't even see the way forward in many cases. It takes a great deal of courage to do that. It also takes community organizers, and we work very closely with the people who live in these outer islands. And in our case, it takes a team of scientists. So we've put together a team of scientists who can address some of the ecological problems that we're seeing on the reefs. So the first thing when I was invited to the outer islands that I did, instead of coming with a plan, is that I sat down and I listened. I asked questions, and I listened. I wanted to know what their cultural context was for conservation. What did they view as the problems, and what did they view as some of their solutions? And, well, not surprisingly, I learned a lot, right? So uh, they also asked me what I could provide for them. So what I did with our team is we actually took a look at the reefs, and we tried to understand the ecological context of those problems. What was happening? What was the reef telling us what was happening? And how could we share that information with them? Because climate change is causing changes that are far faster than most of these people historically are able to deal with in their own traditional systems. So here's a quick story about sex and sex changers, uh, which in a, in a society which is extremely discreet, it's a difficult subject to, to bring up here, but this is about spear guns also. Spear guns, spring-loaded spear guns, have caused a steep decline in many fish, especially because they're used at night with lights. And at night with lights, they can target parrotfish, which is one of their favorite foods, which they've always eaten. But this is a new technology. So you might ask, well, why, why would they use a new technology that's driving their system into decline? Well, it's kind of like, you know, why would you buy a new cell phone that's bigger and better or smaller and better than the one that you have? Right? Because it's going to meet your needs. You're not going to think about the impact right away. So um, parrotfish are sex changers. They start off life as females and become males. So by killing all the large fish, they're killing all the males. So this is a problem reproductively in the population. In addition, parrotfish eat algae, and algae destroys reefs in a, in a simplified way. And so by removing the parrotfish, you are also affecting the ecology of the reef. So this, is, this seemed, made perfect sense to them when explained this way. They have the traditional systems to incorporate that knowledge. I didn't have to tell them, I didn't want to tell them, and told them I wouldn't tell them what to do with that information, but I could provide them that information and they could incorporate that into the systems that have been working for them for a very, very long time. This is happening in the Micronesian outer islands today. It's a model that the world should be looking at. The world should be watching and listening to what these people are doing. We're working together as partners in conservation. We're both bringing things to the table that we couldn't possibly bring if we were alone. We couldn't implement these kinds of plans if we were alone. It's happening at an unprecedented rate. They're making management decisions and changing management plans and in increasing the health of their reefs overnight. These are autonomously governed communities, so they can do that. They don't need to listen to a, a higher authority. They can do it when and if they want to at any given time. So it's a critical time in our planet's history to come up with new and innovative ways to increase that communication between people across cultures, to remove the barriers and the divides and talk to each other about how to move forward. Looking back does not ignore the future. And looking ahead doesn't mean leaving past knowledge behind. Combining those two is a critical step forward, and it is one, as I mentioned earlier, that is incredibly underutilized. If we just spent more time talking to people,
We would learn how to move things forward in a way that's acceptable by all and not mandated by a few. Thank you. Thank you.